Here are my top 10 ways of processing, filtering, redacting, and enriching your logs using the OpenTelemetry collector. At number 10, batching. Now you generally don't want to be streaming log lines a few lines at a time to your log storage backend. It will be a huge overhead on both the collector and the log backend itself. Uh, use the batch processor to send your log lines in batches. There's nothing really to show you in the back end here because obviously it's all um, transparent to us, entirely transparent. It happens in uh, the collector. But here we're telling the collector to create batches of 500 log lines or wait a maximum of two seconds, whichever comes first, and just send out whatever the collector has. Just be sure to watch the resource utilization of the collector since the collector needs to hold the log lines in memory while it batches them up, of course. So it's always gonna be a trade-off between the amount of time you wait for the batch, the number of log lines in the batch, and resource utilization. At number nine, removing sensitive log data. Here is a sample log line. That's really bad news if you're storing those logs for any significant amount of time. Here comes the auditor. The good news, though, is we can use the filter processor to deal with this. Anything that matches the filter rules are dropped. So here we're looking for any log line that contains the case insensitive string password. And if a match is found anywhere in the log line, it's dropped and never sent to the backend. So you never even see it. Now be aware that you should probably filter things first before applying any other processors. After all, there's no point in doing lots of uh, intense you know enrichment um, just to then filter them out and drop those log lines that just again causes unnecessary load on the collector so first filter out any logs that you don't want and then process the remaining ones at number eight dropping low value logs now admittedly the human side of this deciding what to keep and what to drop in an organization is often difficult but once you've made the decision implementing the logic is actually easy. Again, we use the filter processor. In this case, the rule is to filter any log lines where the severity is less than warning. Now, remember, filtering means filtering out. So the debug and info logs in this group never make it to our backend system. They are just dropped at the collector. At number seven, log deduplication. Take these four log lines, for example. Storing that info hello world log line twice is probably pointless. It's gonna take up twice the amount of storage space and cost you money. So wouldn't it be nice to store it once, but also know that there were actually, in fact, two identical log lines originally. And you guessed it, the log dedupe processor does exactly that. Configure it with an interval, which is a sliding time range, and any identical log lines in that window will be deduplicated. The log line will be sent once and a new attribute will be added to that single log line telling users how many lines there actually were originally. Now, of course, it's not just users, your alerting mechanisms can also use this information to correctly infer the real impact of those logs. For example, in a given interval, if you've had 20 error logs, you'll be able to see one error log with a log count of 20, and that's important information for both your humans and your alerting systems. At number six, dynamically adding file and operating system data. Logs, I mean, they're kind of useless if you don't know where they came from. I mean, imagine this log, for example, my second dummy log line dot dot dot. I mean, if only that is sent to my observability solution, I've got no idea at all which pod, which VM, which host, which cloud, which team it came from. And if I need to investigate an issue using that log line, I really wouldn't even know where to begin to look. My observability backend obviously also doesn't know where it should attach this log, i.e. Where did it come from? Which pod or which host? Luckily, the file log receiver contains two fields, include file name and include file path. Now, if we set both of these to true, we start getting useful information and we can combine this with the resource detection processor to get even more high quality information. 
the resource detection processor will dynamically look up the operating system and host information from the host itself, assuming the collector is running on the same host as the log file, and automatically enrich those log lines with the operating system and host level information. So now we're fully aware of where this came from and this log line has suddenly become very useful to us. At number five, log attribute enrichment. So in any large company or enterprise, you're gonna have many teams sending their telemetry data, their logs. You probably want to enforce some sort of ingestion limit, a fair usage policy, or even cross charge the teams internally for their log usage against the backend. After all, it's not fair if you know one team sends 50 terabytes of logs and leaves nothing for your other teams. To handle this, we can use the attributes section of a file log receiver. So in this example, we know that this log file is owned by a particular team and each team in our organization has some unique codes like a unique chargeback code. We instruct the file log receiver to add the key value pairs onto each log line coming from this log file. So now in our observability system, we can query to see exactly how much data team A has ingested and charge them internally for their usage or enforce ingestion policies. Notice also that since every log line has a team and an owner, it makes generating and routing log-based alerts really easy. If a log alert occurs, we simply query for the contact details of the relevant team from the log line itself and send the alert to the correct team, the correct email, which again is on the log line itself. At number four, enriching log files using CSV files. Now, love them or hate them, CSV files are everywhere and they often contain really useful organizational knowledge that simply isn't available from your IT systems. In this example, we have a log line with some content, component equals front end. Now separately, probably on some dusty old forgotten shared drive somewhere, we have a CSV file with some useful organizational information, namely how the components map to teams and ownership. So who owns which components that's held in the CSV file. Think about someone using your observability system. If they only see a log with, you know, component equals front end, they probably now need to go searching for who owns the front end and who to contact if something goes wrong. Let's be friendly and make that easier for them by pulling the information in from the CSV file and attaching it to the log line. Now step one is to use a file log operator, specifically the regex parser, to search the log body for the string component equals. And if that's found, we grab the bit after it and store it as a variable called comp. Next, we use the lookup processor to load the CSV file from disk and match on the comp field. The lookup processor does the rest for us, adding the additional fields as attributes uh, onto our log line. So the lookup processor is going to pull the CSV and push it onto our log line. And now our dynamically enriched log line is being sent to the observability backend, and that is actually useful to us humans and AI, but don't tell it I said that. It's worth noting that the lookup processor, which was developed by Bindplane, is not a standard part of the OpenTelemetry collector distributions, so you'll need it to build it yourself. But I do have a video, links are above, showing you just how to do that. And number three, setting log severities based on the log content. Imagine you've inherited a service or some sort of off-the-shelf product where it's either difficult or impossible for the developers to change the log severities. However, you know that when you see some specific log content that really is serious enough to be classed as an error and not an info. So for example, in this log line, the phrase something is broken is obviously serious enough to be classed as an error. This configuration uses the transform processor to first default all log lines to info where there isn't already a status set. And then the body of the log is searched. And if the string something is broken is found, both the severity number and the severity text are lifted to error, but only for those log lines. And yes, OpenTelemetry does have two fields that denote error.
At number two, conditional additions. Now imagine this log line. In our organization, we know that tier one is our gold level support, but that's not on the log line. Tier two is our silver and tier three is our bronze. Now in the spirit again of being friendly to our ops teams, our AI overlords and automation scripts, we want it to be obvious that a certain log line came from a gold level support customer or app. And we don't want our staff having to figure out that tier one actually means gold. It's just not there on the log line. So let's put it on the log line. For this, use the transform processor to search for user tier in camel case equals tier one. And if found, the transform processor adds a new attribute called support.tier with the value gold. Obviously, we repeat that for silver and bronze tiers. Coming in at number one, standardizing logs. Now imagine again, you inherit a new service or a new developer starts. You've already got your organizational policy that we've just seen that all logs must include a user tier in camel case, but you begin receiving logs that don't quite meet your policy. Something's gone wrong. These new logs show user dot tier. And so the gold, silver, bronze, the enrichment that we've just done, they won't work anymore. Let's fix that now using the transform processor to standardize logs across the company. Add a find and replace rule which searches each log line for user dot tier and replaces it with user tier in camel case. And now our existing rules will work flawlessly. So there you have it. They're my top 10 ways to make your life working with logs a little bit easier when you're working with the open telemetry collector, which was your favorite. Did I miss any good examples? Please do comment below to let me know. I want to learn from you as much as you learn from me. As always, thank you so much for your time. If you found this useful, do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you do subscribe, I want to make sure you reach all of my content. Set the uh, bell to all because that will get you every single piece of content that I update. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very, very soon.